Good evening, everybody. Madam Clerk. This meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 6 at sec, notice of which was sent to the record and the Star Ledger and was posted on the Municipal Bulletin Board. Okay, roll call, please. Councilmember Battaglia? Here. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Here. Councilmember Sims? Here. Councilmember Keeling Geddes is absent. Mayor LaBros? Here. Would everybody please rise for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, okay, before we go into the city manager's report, I'd like to welcome our new city manager, Mr. Ted Ehrenberg. Um, this is a, your first official meeting, first official action. Uh, welcome from myself and I guess the rest of the council. And uh, welcome, we look, Ted. We look oh. forward to having a, uh, a great relationship well, and moving the, the city forward. <laughs> and uh, any words you would like to say during your manager's report, feel free. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, as the mayor stated, this is my first city manager's report officially for the council. I just want to thank the mayor and the council and the citizens of this community for allowing me this opportunity to hopefully prove we selected somebody that has their best interest at heart and I will work hard with the staff to achieve those goals that are set. Um, I've met with, all, well, I have met with every department head and not every employee, but I've had nothing but great cooperation from the staff. I think we're going to hit the ground running and hopefully move the city in a positive direction and enhance the things that need to be enhanced and improve whatever we can do. So my first evening city manager's report states that this is a special meeting on October 12th. And originally this was supposed to be designed for a stop park, but because of PEP requirements, it has been moved. So the focus is now to address the tennis courts, which need in some rehab at Carver Park. And that improvement is a total project of $85,000. And with the assistance of Millennium Strategies, um, we have a $42,500 match. That project would improve the sidewalks, the resurfacing of the tennis courts, and would it also improve the fencing. Um, tonight, we have Peter Blanos from Millennium Strategies that's going to be invited up, and he can answer all of your questions and any particulars that you have. And obviously, I'll assist if there is a need. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Welcome, Pete. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council Administration. Um, again, my name is Pete Blanos with Millennium Strategies, the uh, grants consultants for the city of Hackensack. Um, as Ted had mentioned, the purpose of uh, this hearing tonight is to obtain public comment on a grant application being submitted by the city to the County of Bergen uh, for recreational improvements in Carver Park. Um, just to give you a quick overview of this program, the Bergen County Open Space Trust Fund Municipal Park Improvement Program is designed to provide funding for uh, recreational improvements, uh, new improvements, or the rehabilitation of existing recreational facilities uh, within all 70 municipalities uh, in the County of Bergen. Um, there's about $1.3 million in funding available um, through this program. That 1.3 million in funding is, that, is then separated into six municipal subregions, um, of which there's 10 to 11 municipalities in each subregion. The city of Hackensack's in the central subregion with nine other municipalities. Um, and in total, there's approximately $300,000 in grant funding that's available uh, that the 10 municipalities within that, uh, within that region can compete for. Um, there is a dollar for dollar matching uh, match to this grant. So for every dollar we request, uh, the city will have to match with one dollar of its own. Um, and so the project that we've identified as being the greatest need at this time is the resurfacing of the tennis courts in Carver Park. Uh, I did pass out a packet to all the members of the council the administration. There are some over there by the council agendas as well. Um, if you didn't have a chance to grab one, that gives you some information about the project and the scope and the costs. Um, so as you'll be able to see in, you know, within the pictures uh, for the project area, um, the courts are in need of resurfacing. There's 
um, a variety of uh, erosion and cracking issues that uh, you know are um, you know detrimental to the play surface. Uh, and so this grant would be designed to not only resurface those courts but replace the fencing around the tennis courts. Um, so a comprehensive improvement of the court play area and also for the resurfacing of the paths uh, within Carver Park. Um, again, it is a matching grant, so an 85,000 total project costs with 42,500 of that coming in, you know, through our grant request and the other 42,500 being matched by the city. Um, based upon the typical cycle for these grants, um, we'd make the application to the county um, and then we'd probably hear back sometime next June as to whether, you know, what our award amount would be for this project. Um, from there, the county would give the city two years to implement the project, design and construct and close it out. So um, you'd have two years from the date of the award uh, to complete those activities. Um, so that's a general overview, again, of the program and the project. Hopefully answered some questions with that. Um, but, um, you know, that concludes the, uh, really the presentation <laughs> on the project. Um, so if there are any public comments, I think we would have to, uh, I guess, I don't know if you need to, to motion to open to the public. Yes, no, we'll do that. Okay. Um, just uh, probably questions from the council would be appropriate first. With the money that we're going to get, do we want to repair the sidewalks around the park? The, um, the, the, the funding will be used to repair the sidewalks on the interior of the park area, so that any pathways that run within the park area will be resurfaced. Um, anything that's adjacent or outside of the limits of the park wouldn't qualify only because it's solely for the park improvements. Right. Um, so those are, I guess, considered, would be, might be considered outside of the limits. One of the things before we forget is to have the electrical outlet in the way David can hook it up the scoreboard. But right now you have to run a light cord like 100 feet to do that. So it will be nice if we can get it an outlet for 110 volts, and that way he can hook it up the board. Right, David? Yeah. I got a question. Now, you say two years. <coughs> is this project gonna, is not gonna be voted on until June of next, 2017? Correct, so um, there is a process. Um, since there is uh, 70 towns, unfortunately, the process gets dragged out a little longer. It's, it's a unique situation to Bergen County. Um, only because there's so many applications mm. that they field on an annual basis. So what would typically happen is they'll receive the applications, um, then from there they'll go into a committee, into the Open Space Trust Fund Committee. Um, they'll look at the numbers, look at how much was requested um, from each municipality. Um, a lot of the times what will happen is they only have 1.3 million throughout the county to give out but the requests that they receive could be anywhere from two to three to four million. So the, the amount of funding that municipalities are asking for is greater than what's available. So they do have to go through a process and vet out with all the municipalities what they'd be willing to take, if they'd be willing to take a cut in their funding. Um, we're right in line with where we need to be with our request. Like I said, there's about 300,000 available. So 40,000, we're kind of right in line with where we want to be. Um, but with respect to the, continuing with the process, when they get through that, then it goes um, to a vote from the Open Space Committee. From there, they do a public hearing with the freeholders uh, to present all the projects and their recommendations. And then from there, the freeholders would move to vote on the, uh, on the projects themselves <laughs> and approve them. And by the time they develop the contracts and the award letters for all those, it's usually about a six to eight month period. Um, we'll probably know a little sooner, so we may know in like, maybe a month or month and a half in advance um, what you know the projects that are being presented to the freeholders and the amount that's being presented typically once that's presented the freeholders vote on that then in june so we would kind of have a, an advanced idea as to when um you know what we'd be getting probably a month or two ahead of an award letter but the award letter probably i'd be comfortable saying it probably wouldn't be until about june that we would receive that 2017 of 2017 and it won't be fixed to 2018 uh, yeah the city from there um, the city can obviously move as quickly as possible in you know designing the project and um, you know then authorizing uh, or bidding it and awarding a contract for construction that's obviously at the you know however the fast the city wants to move forward with that but the award will not be made until June and then you have two years to complete the project from that date. So you can go ahead and do it. 
Sometimes the city can put the money forward and then they get paid back with the grant. Right, once, once we know we're getting it, we can do that. Once we know we're getting it. Once it's secured. Yeah. Once the funding's here, yeah, correct. You're right. And one more note there, please, about the colors. Don't try to invent the wheel by putting some colors like blue or yellow because in the high school, they paint the tennis court with some kind of color that then they have to repaint it. Well, then it'll all go out in the spec package so there's, when, there's when we hire it. like a green and white and that's it. <laughs> Because they spend a lot of Pete, money. Do you know if this included, I know it includes resurfacing the court, but what about the uh, stanchions for the nets and everything? Is that going to. Yeah, I think yeah. all that can be included as a part of the. As so a part the, of the overall. Just a new net, new stanchions. Yep, yeah. so there'll be a call. full rehabilitation yeah. of that yeah. of that facility. Yeah. Um, well, because if they were, a lot of times they they do this. Yep, they you know, did that already, and they welded it yeah. somehow. Yeah. yeah, straight now? They do no, they no. straight, but it is what it is. Yeah, I think they should try to. I don't even know as a part of the construction if they could use the existing. Ones anymore. Yeah, because once they dig up the macadam, I mean, that's going to loosen everything up anyway. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. One quick hey. question. I mean, obviously, you have this stringent criteria, which you, you've discussed with us. Sure. But um, is there anything else that you're doing in writing this grant proposal that will kind of entice them to awarding it to us? Like, do they have themes from year to year where they're looking for green technology, so to speak, or, or <coughs> you know, a, a certain type of design? Uh, or a certain type of athletic endeavor that they're trying to support. Sure. I mean, is there something, uh, anything other than meeting the very specific criteria that will help the city uh, secure these funds? That the, you might their, their biggest uh, criteria that they have is ensuring that the the park will be uh, accessible to the public. There's not going to be any limitations on it. Um, so, for example, sometimes uh, municipalities would ask about things like batting cages. Mm -hmm. um, so batting cages, although they may be a need and they may be a very good use for them within the municipality, the county views that as something that can be restricted and regulated to the extent that only folks who play baseball within the town can utilize that facility. Um, whereas a tennis court, you know, in, car, you know, in the park um, that's open to the public, you know, if people want to go down there and play tennis at any time, obviously within the limitations of when the park's open right. and whatnot, they have the ability to do so. So access to recreation is really the most important thing. Um, that's really the, the biggest criteria. Um, you know, obviously, our, what our request is 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 a is a big factor too. Making sure if you, there's like I said, there's only three hundred thousand in funding available for the ten towns in our region. If we ask for three hundred thousand dollars in funding for a project, right, we're not going to get that. And the county may say, "How realistic is it that they're going to come up with a you know a three hundred thousand or two hundred plus thousand dollar match right. um, to 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 complement that?" Um, Once we accept, this, if we award the grant and we accept the grant, I understand you're saying it must be open to everyone. That's obvious. Sure. Are there any other restrictions such as, like, we have, say, rental fees for using tennis courts or uh, et cetera. Are you restricted in that regard as well once uh, you accept funding? Typically, it's all within, uh, the, the county understands that municipalities have their you know, mm -hmm. fee their, schedule. Uh, they have their their fee. They have their fee schedules. They have their the parks open from X time to Y right. time. Um, they they understand that if you have events there and you charge for those events that are specifically geared there's towards. No other, there's no other restriction once you accept. This it. is no, a no. Does the fact that this is a Green Acres funded park, Carver Park, does that have any impact on this at all? Um, the only thing that you know, obviously, with with Green Acres is, and and you wouldn't even be able to use this grant funding towards it either. But is you can't have any like closed structures if mm -hmm. you know, if Carver Park, you know, whatever the Rossi stated was there whenever it got its Green Acres designation. Um, you know, if 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 you obviously put any closed structures on the site without d having notified DEP, that may um, that may be problematic. But again, this grant isn't designed to do that. Um, this funding won't do that. This funding is going to keep, you know, it's going to be right within the, uh, the, you know, the limitations of what Green Acres would accept. It's a general recreational improvement. Okay. Any other comments? No, that's it. I need a motion to open to the public on this issue, please. I'll offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Councilmember Sims. Aye. Councilmember Keeling Geddes is absent. Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Anybody from the public who would like to speak on this grant, please come forward. Give your name and address to the clerk. Regina DePasco, Parker Avenue. Um, I'm just curious why we're having a special meeting in October on Yom Kippur before sundown. Um, 
which prevented some people from showing up. Um, for something that's not going to be awarded for another eight months, like we need eight months to get the grant, grant together, get the paperwork, we already have the estimate. Um, I'm just wondering why another special meeting. Um, I don't think it takes eight months to do that. My other question is, uh, Mr. Ehrenberg, you mentioned something about STIB, but I don't know if your um, mic was on, on or if you were speaking into it. What got bumped at STIB and why to do this? There were, obviously I don't have any prior history, but it was explained to me that there were required DEP approvals to make what conditions were gonna be improved in the park and because of the timeline that we would miss that opportunity the city moved to another park to meet this timeline. Okay, and eight months is needed? I mean, a timeline? Because Stide Park is looking for a dog park. They're looking for a dog 100%. park there. Um, Carver already got the, the Splash Park, and we're doing something else in Carver. I don't know. Um, how about, you know, I, I, DEP could have been possibly worked around, but, yeah, my question, does it take eight months to do to do this? Sure, I'm happy to answer. Um, so, uh, right. it's, okay. Um, so with respect uh, to the, uh, the, the Stide Park project, um, we had initially, when we first presented the grant to the, uh, to the, to the city manager at that time, Mr. Trost, um, we had convened myself, Mr. Dibb, uh, the city's project manager, Mr. Uh, Vriesma, uh, to discuss some ideas for projects that would be uh, applicable um, to this uh, to this grant, uh, at the time we had reviewed Stibe as being a uh, viable project. There were some improvements there that we identified that uh, may be good for that park and might fit within the confines of this grant. Um, at that time, we had decided to move forward with it. We had advertised at that time for the meeting and to have the hearing in in September. Um, but Boswell actually went out and did the uh, site investigation. And, and reviewed the site, and at that time they had determined that there would be some significant permitting requirements uh, for this uh, project based upon the, um, the proximity to the Coles Brook. Uh, so in reviewing that, um, those permits could have been in excess of $20,000 to obtain to do this work. Um, and so I think at that time we had looked at it and said, ba based upon the amount of funding that was available, um, and what we could actually obtain, having this large permit on top of uh, a rather large match as well, um, the cost benefit of the improvements at that time, just it, it, the permitting costs would have, um, it, it was cost prohibitive in that respect. So um, obviously, like I said, there is a, there's a, there's a, uh, a requirement to advertise uh, within X amount of time, which is 15 days. Uh, before, prior to the hearings uh, that, that we're having right now. So um, by the time we had uh, reassessed, re-identified the Carver Park project um, and were authorized to move ahead by that by the city manager at that time, um, there was an, another council meeting um, that we could do this as a part of. So we convened a special meeting um, to fall within that 15 day requirement um, so that we would still meet the requirements of the grant um, and still be able to fall. So there's there's a 15 day requirement to advertise, uh, and and so the the public has to have been given 15 day days notice from the date of the hearing, to, uh, from the date of the advertisement to the date of the hearing, um, to be notified uh, of the hearing. So the initial um, hearing we were going to have on September 21st, we had advertised in the end of August, um, and then by the time we had identified uh, the issue with with Stibe, with the permitting at that point. Um, the 15 days really leading up to, uh, to the, we, we didn't have 15 days left between that and the 21st we advertised. So it, it, it's, you have to start all over. Uh, I asked the county, I said, could we get an exemption? I said, we had, uh, you know, we said a, 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 a set of circumstances that were outside, really outside of our control and we were unaware of until we went ahead and did the investigatory work on the site. Um, and at that point, between September 21st and the time we had identified that, we wouldn't have been able to advertise to make the 21st meeting. Did anybody realize tonight down the court and at 6 o'clock rather than 6.30? You need to tell her, though, that the grant is due tomorrow. Right, the grant is, is due it tomorrow. To be, it either had well, to be... It's like a, 6 o'clock rather than 6.30, sundown 
there was no thought process on that at all. It just picked six o'clock because okay. it was only one meeting. It was obvious to a lot of people. Thanks. Any other questions from the public? Related to the same topic. I've never done this before. <laughs> Relax. Um, oh, D. Pontesecca. Are you Debbie? Yes. Thank you for your help. And Regina. Thank yes. you so much. Um, it seems Stipe Park was pushed to the side very quickly. All we want is a dog park. <laughs> We're willing to pay a fee to keep it going. The people that, I called the Board of Health just to see how many more dog owners they are, there are. And in one year, it was like an increase of 100 dog licenses um, given out. So there are a lot of people that would really enjoy the dog park. Do you know how far it has to be from Colesbrook to where we could start a dog park? Like for well, the we have to look at in, in most cases, it's 300 feet from any waterway or body. Um, I could check that fact. You should find me your information. I'd be glad to check it and call you back. So you have that factual. I know that the city, uh, and like I said, this is my second week, but I know that the city has great intentions to make all of these. Unfortunately, we have to, um, there's only so much money, as this gentleman has explained, in the pot, and we're trying to take advantage as much of this as we can. But obviously, um, going forward, we're going to have some goal setting. We're going to identify these goals. Obviously, the mayor and council will put together their list. We will, in my mind, identify these goals, fund these goals, and work towards that. So I just wrote down Dog Park um, for your neighborhood. I was up there. I know where they, they filled the water the, um, in the back where they used to ice skate. Um, right. Because believe me, I'm at that park three times a day. But nothing good happens back there. <laughs> nothing. I could, I could write a book. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> and the things I've found at 64, I've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just willing to write your address and telephone number where I can reach out to you, I will certainly do so off mic and, and speak I to you about that. No, no, you're good. You're good. Thank you, Regina. What, what, I'd, what I'd like to do with, uh, through the council is some type of polling of the area um, to see that that area is in favor, and I believe they will be, of, of a dog park. But I just don't want to turn it into a uh, a civil war over over a dog park. But I, I'm all you know me. I've always had dogs. I'm yeah. totally in favor of dog parks. Right. I would imagine you know I would definitely pay attention like the people on Davis there just to make sure that they're all on board, get everybody on board. Most of them have, Most of them have dogs. dogs. I know, but uh, it's just a real dog friendly park, you know, and it would be well kept. No, it'd be. It's a great idea, and I think that one area is perfect that fits far enough away from them. Now, there was restrictions on a, even a dog walking park because by a brook? if that got washed um, into the, the brook. river, mm. it could be a pollutant, so I'll check. Right. Thank you so much. Albert has something. Mr. Dib. Thank you, Mayor Council. And I just wanted to mention, incidentally, this was never a situation where it was dog park versus no. tennis court. We had looked at Sty Park because we wanted to look for ways to protect the brook bank because of some dumping that occurs there from time to time. Mm -hmm. So whenever we have an opportunity for grant funding, we want to try to find the best way to make use of that. I will call you. But I just wanted to make it clear that it wasn't one versus the other. This, it was right. a totally different consideration at Stuy Park. Well, we know Stuy Park needs some work, not just as far as the, 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 the park itself, but as far as, you know, we, there's some shenanigans go on there have right. been known to go on there we've had the police call there on several occasions but uh i think a dog park would be a great addition to that park it's a good location for it for the city in general so exactly. and it would be a good test for how the dog parks work in case we want to put it somewhere else well, so. i think to put a splash pad there. but i don't know what about i mean what about the people that live down there by columbus park i mean going to star park may be a good distance away from them so 
No, they're never going to go there from Colombo to Stipe. No, that's why you have to do one at a time. That's it. They do one, then we do the second one. Uh, and we should also reach out. I know Maywood has a, uh, a dog park. The county has a dog park at Overpeck. Um, we should check with other communities. Have Some of them have two dog parks at one, one for small dogs, one for large yeah. dogs, uh, which I think is not a bad idea. Yes. Um, Big bulls in this side. Yeah. Seeing... Uh, you know how they work out and how they do it how they work out is there any insurance issues is there any you know stuff like that any litigation involved but cover our bases we should look into that yep absolutely and I'll, to be honest with you i mean a dog park i don't think it's going to be a tremendous cost no because you're not really you know it's fences really the, maybe we're going to put new fences and cover but maybe we can reuse that ones and put in someplace else uh -huh. I think it's a great idea, and we'll certainly look into it. Thank you. I'm going to look into Anybody else on this issue? Motion to close to the public. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Pataglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Chilean Geddes is absent. Mayor Labros? Aye. Okay. This time I need a motion to open to the public in general. We need to do the resolution first. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's do it. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, motion. Uh, oh, go ahead. Read away. Resolution 372-16. 372-16 is a resolution of the City of Hackensack authorizing the submission of a Bergen County Open Space Recreation Farmland and Historic Preservation Trust Fund Municipal Park Improvement Grant Application. Need a motion, please? Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Pataglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. The member Killing Gettys is absent. Mayor Labros? Aye. Okay. We've finished our business for the night. At this time, I'd like a motion to open to the public. Offer. Second. Second. Roll call. Pataglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Killing Gettys is absent. Mayor Labros? Aye. This time, anybody from the public would like to speak, please come up, give your name and address to the clerk. You'll have five minutes, please. Gina DePasqua again, Parker Avenue still. Um, last meeting, I asked you about the, the blue line, and um, there have been some controversial statements made about it, but um, bottom line, towns are doing it. It shows support for the police. It doesn't take away from any other group. And anybody that is disturbed by it, I, I, I have to question their agenda. Um, the county is permitting it to be done on county roads. It's not, that doesn't get in the way. I don't know what, why Hackensack just hasn't done it. I, I don't understand that. And you know, for that matter, for the fire department, for EMS, for all of our first responders, um, a simple, simple, low cost show of support. It's, you know, I'm, I'm asking again that um, that it be considered. And like I said, I heard some controversial comments about it that um, I found disturbing because it doesn't take away from anybody else. It doesn't take away from any other group. It, it, they're not mutually exclusive, okay? Um, any group that doesn't sort, support the police, I have to question, or any of our first responders. Um, so I'm really hoping that, you know, where we'll, maybe we'll be the last ones in Bergen County to do it. Um, also, it's mid-October, I know, but snow ordinance. The snow committee, been talked about for years. Um, this would help all parts of Hackensack because I can speak for my street, cars park on both sides. There's no parking on Prospect when it's snow covered, so where do they park on the side streets? And they park on either side of our driveways. They don't use their, their, their own driveways for some reason. And then every snow, we have to shovel out to the middle of the street to get out of our driveway. The, the width of a car, we have to shovel out. An odd even system, no parking. If it snows on an odd day or, or even day, you know, then it's the luck of the draw. But right now, every time it snows, we have to shovel out to the middle of the street because the plow comes by and we gotta shovel through what the plow is, which is out past the cars. 
So we, we need some relief on this because it doesn't, it doesn't work. It, it, the people that clean off their cars, they throw it in the street, they throw it you know, where we just shoveled. It, it just, it's a problem. And like I said, it's been several years since the discussion of a snow committee, but nothing ever came of it. It's October, maybe, maybe can get something. And I had sent an ordinance, a sample ordinance to uh, the prior city manager and to all of you and nobody even responded to me on it. So it just, I would like to consider it because for the entire city, it would help. Like I said, my neighborhood, people have long driveways. I'd rather park in the driveway and not have to shovel it than to park in the street and have to clean off my car in the street and then shovel my driveway. But they don't use them. And um, it, it just, it's inconsiderate for the rest, for the rest of us. Um, Mr. Ehrenberg, welcome. Thank you. Um, I wish you luck, and uh, I hope that you will keep us informed and, you know, things that are going on that affect the city. There's some of us residents that, you know, like to, to keep informed on things. Um, recently, there was a workshop at Teterboro for the noise. Nobody knew about it. I happened to get an email um, because I complained about the noise, and... Um, you know, it was informative, and we put in our two cents about, you know, the noise over Hackensack. There were a lot of people from Rutherford and East Rutherford putting in their two cents also. But, you know, there are things that you never know what somebody might be interested in, in attending. And just putting it out there that, hey, there, this is going on, and, and, you know, if anybody wants to. But I would appreciate that. And you want this information primarily from our website as well? Or you could announce it at a, at a meeting and during your city manager's report. If it's you know upcoming and you know about it, that's that's the perfect time because then it's on video too that people can, you know, can find out. It doesn't have to be on the website. I'm not going to make you put everything on the website. <laughs> oh, the Teterboro, yes. No, but there was the one, the DOT thing that was back in June that nobody knew about. I know it wasn't you. I know. That's why I'm just asking you. There are things that some of us would go to those things, and you know, we live here. We know what would affect who and how. So. I don't know. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, I don't think she's going to but it's just in general. But as far as the, uh, one of the things we definitely want to tighten up is snow removal in the city. Um, it's, it is an issue. I don't disagree with some of Mrs. DePasqua's comments, though I think we all end up shoveling out every time the plow goes by to some extent, but they shouldn't have to shovel out all the way halfway into the street. Uh, but that said, I'd like to, you know, Maybe sit down get a, with Jesse and really get a plan going. We, we, we haven't really, last year we started enforcing some of the streets with the no parking, which hadn't been done, period. Um, we started actually towing and ticketing cars to, to some large numbers, actually. And uh, it caused a little ruckus, but you know that the, the law is the law. So we, we enforced the ordinance and the laws that were there. Um, but we do need to tighten up our snow removal. Anybody else from the public? Seeing none, motion to close to the public. Offer. Second. Council Member Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Castrino? Aye. Council Member Sims? Aye. Council Member Gillingettis is absent. Mayor LeBrock? Aye. Anybody from the council? I'm going to get my name now. <laughs> Can I say something? <laughs> yeah. Not really. Uh, I look forward no. to you know any any additional funds that we can bring into the city is always a help. I think all of our parks we've been trying to do the best we can from park to park and making them as uh, amenable to our residents as possible. I like the dog park idea. I know it's a popular thing right now, and we need more good suggestions like that. I'm sure we'll look into it and see if it's realistic. Thank you for coming and bringing your question, Mr. Sims. Um, to the young lady. With the dog park, thank you for bringing it to our attention. And that's D. 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 And Regina, um, I don't know with, with your statement about the cars parked in the driveway, are the people not utilizing their driveways? Should they be penalized or something? I don't know. Maybe we'll discuss that if we get this committee up and running and parking on one side of the street and the opposite side, I think it's, a, it's something to consider and thank you for bringing it up. 
Good night. Everyone get home safe. Okay. First, I want to start off by uh, letting the public know and everybody here and everybody out in, in the TV world that uh, Mr. Sims is being honored by the NAACP on October 29th, I believe. Um, it's be a great night. That's a great honor. We're all proud of you and we'll all be there to support you. So uh, we're happy about that. Um, I'm going to read a statement very similar to what I read last week and you know you saw what happened in the past uh, two weeks with this lawsuit um, with I'm sorry with the chief Caesar receiving his back pay and his legal fees and, and whatever which was pretty much we were ordered to do so but you know there, there's still issues going on here and uh, and now that former police chief Charles Zeus is receiving about three millions in, in back pay benefits and legal fees I'm calling on Mr. Zizi to stop seeking another $30 million from taxpayers for so-called psychological and emotional distress, among other claims. The city's already paying his $1.7 million in lost wages and benefits as required by state law after his final criminal conviction was dismissed in August and is reviewing its legal options regarding the $1.1 million in attorney's fees owed, by, owed to Ziza. I believe that the state should be held accountable for these legal fees because the prosecution was conducted by state authorities, not the city of Hackensack. Last year, his attorneys filed official tort claims informing the city and state that it would be filing lawsuits seeking another $30 million in damages. Those claims are still pending, and Ziza's attorneys have refused to dismiss them. I want Hackensack residents to know that this administration will never allow this to get away, would never allow Mr. Ziza to get away with this taxpayer ripoff and that we will vigorously defend the city against these outrageous legal threats. Mr. Ziza should drop any claims towards the city immediately. Um, and I also want to go on to say that these police officers, you know, there, a lot of these decisions, it seems, especially in uh, the appellate court and Judge Steele's uh, summary, said we had no viable witnesses, that there was no credibility. I disagree with that. I don't believe that our, all, all these cops lied, not for a minute. Matter of fact, I know that some of them, several of them are telling the truth and to sit there and discredit our police officers as liars uh, doesn't sit well with me. And um, I think there was a little more digging had to be done into that before that decision was made, but that's my opinion and my opinion alone. But uh, I certainly do not believe all our police officers stood there under oath and, and lied. Um, with that said, I need a motion to close. I need a motion to go into closed session, actually. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Pataglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Councilmember Sims. Aye. Councilmember Keeling got his absent. Mayor Labros. Aye. We'll be Where, talking. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Whereas the mayor and council of the city of Hackensack deem it necessary to discuss certain actions under section 7B7 and 7B8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, which pertains to matters falling within attorney client privilege, ongoing litigation, and personnel matters. Concerning the employment of a current or prospective public employee, whereas the mayor and council of the city of Hackensack is of the opinion that such circumstances may presently exist, and whereas the mayor and council wishes to discuss the following issues, personnel matters, ongoing litigation, matters involving attorney-client privilege. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the city of Hackensack deem it necessary to exclude the public from this discussion. The outcome of the discussion will be disclosed within 90 days, or at such time as the interests of the city do not require confidentiality. Alrighty, well, we'll be back out to adjourn at whatever time. Feel free to stay or. <laughs> Coming back in, you need a roll call? Um, well, we need a motion to adjourn the closed session. I need motion to adjourn this closed session that we just had. I'll offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Killing Geddes is absent. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Right. Motion to close the meeting, please. Hang on. Offer. Second. Wait, who offered? Gabby. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Councilmember Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilmember Sims? Aye. Councilmember Killing Geddes is absent. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Okay. Uh, 751. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming.